show you guys how to run a protein purification column by gravity using this sort of tubing setup, which will make it a lot easier because it will run uh, automatically without you having to pipette like all the time. Um, so in this sort of setup, you have your protein column, and inside I have just glass beads to stand in place for resin. You have a stopcock at the bottom, and you have a three-way uh, valve at the top. And up here is tubing connecting three-way valve to the solvent reservoir, um, where your buffer is. And so let's take a closer look at what's going on up here, because this is really the important part. Um, so this three-way valve, we're going to start with it uh, in the off position, so closed off to the column, but open to the syringe and to this tubing. And so the first step is to prime the tubing um, by pulling your buffer um, all the way until it reaches the syringe. And then we're going to flip from the syringe um, to close off the syringe and have it be open between the solvent reservoir and the column itself. Okay. So right now you don't see anything happening, um, and that's because the bottom stopcock is closed. So once I open this, um, you'll see that it'll start to flow, um, and we'll get a nice constant drip. And so the rate at which this is dripping is proportional to the vertical uh, elevation change between the top of the column and the solvent reservoir. And so you can see that if I close the stopcock at the bottom, it stops running. Right? So essentially what you need is to have an airtight connection between the top of the column and the reservoir, and therefore every drop that leaves the bottom will pull another drop in from the top. Um, so if I open this up a little bit, Okay, so perhaps you can see that there's a little bit of liquid um, standing at the top of the column. And if I lift the solvent reservoir higher, uh, you can just leave it there. If I lift this a little bit higher, you can see that there will be one drop that comes, right? And if I lift it higher still, there's going to be a greater elevation change, and therefore there's going to be um, more applied pressure, and you'll end up with a higher volume of uh, solution here. And you can see that when I open this again, Basically, the rate at which it drips is also proportional to how tall this is. So if you want your column to run faster, um, essentially what you can do is just increase the vertical distance between the buffer and the top of your column. Um, okay, and then when you want to stop, you just close the bottom stopcock. So the height to which this comes is going to be proportional to the distance between, again, the buffer and the top of the column. And so if I let it run again and bring the solvent reservoir back to, like, uh, not so tall, and then close this, you can see that the amount that builds up on top is a lot shorter, because the distance now between these two is a lot less. So in doing this, if you ever need to switch between buffers, as long as the column is actively running, if it's running fast enough, you can actually just take this out and switch into the next one. So now I'm switching into water. And if you do it quickly enough, um, you should be able to keep the flow running. If you find that it's not, like it's stuck, so this you can see is still moving really slowly. If it ever stops because you have too much air in the line, basically you restart it by repriming this, close this to the point where it's close to the... so close the bottom, close this to the column, reprime the tubing, um, close this off to the syringe, and then reopen the stopcock at the bottom. I'm going to run this pretty fast.